Now that the floor is primed, I can embed this single fall infinity tray or former into the space here. Now, before I put that tray down, there's one very important thing I've got to do, and that is to put this gasket on, because you don't get a chance to do it after the tray is in place, bedded down. All this comes in the kit. It's important you don't lose any of those bits. This just sits nicely round into there. Beautiful. Let's do a trial fit on the tray. By the way, we've already got a video on installing a single fall infinity tray, so you can watch that if you want to see a lot more detail or you can watch this where I deal with a couple of problems which are specific to this particular site. So at the moment of truth, even though I've set all this out, it's always a nice feeling when it all fits in place. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I didn't rehearse that before we started filming. <laughs> So I already knew it was gonna fit, but there you go. That's exactly what you want. That is hard back against the wall, against the pre-wall, the stud wall there. And because I've put a couple of bits of four by two in there in the bottom of the stud, that's, that's going across there. Um, I've got a good fixing into, into the back. So there's no weight on that back edge because the tiles have come down there, you wouldn't stand that close. Where the weight is, is from here onwards really. So that's reinforced across there. And so long as we've got support all the way under that bit there, we're fine. So I've tried it. Now I know I can bed it down except for one thing. Right, so that's got a fall on it, which is what we want. This bit here is gonna be level, and you can see that that is absolutely spot on. So that's happy, isn't it? So that means I haven't got to worry about jacking that back edge up. One more thing, let's try it. Not just in that plane, but in this one as well. Because obviously we don't want the water collecting in that edge. The whole thing is falling down that way. So I've got to pick that up. It's about six mil. So, okay, I can bed through there, but I need to put more of a bed of adhesive on this side, level there, and level there. So that's not too bad. I'm quite happy with that. As I progress, you'll see that this building actually drops away quite dramatically. It's 200 years old, lovely old building, but it's like, you know, sunk a little bit here and there and so I'm going to pick up those falls when we start putting the rest of the elements board across the floor. The great thing about this is that you can bed it on the KST adhesive and take out those discrepancies and get the thing looking right. Now in a way it's not necessary to do anything about the falls outside the wet area but the reason I'm doing it is just from an aesthetic point of view because when you've got your tile lines in and you see the floor dropping and you see the tiles tapering, it doesn't look great. So we've got an opportunity here to make it right and to make it look good and uh, I think we're gonna take it. But if you didn't do that, the customer couldn't blame you. It's their building and that's the way it is. Unless they specifically said, I want the whole thing leveled through. But that's tiling, that's plumbing. Now that the tray's bedded in and level, we need to make up the surrounding floor to the same height as the tray. So from here to the existing floor level is 10 millimeters. So we use this elements board, 10 millimeter thick elements board, and we bed it down on the floor. Now the good thing about bedding it down is that it's then not following the contours of the floor because sometimes, especially the building of this age, you've got all those little cuppings on the floorboards are up and down and you don't want the tiler to have to make that up so we can use this now i happen to know because i've put the level across this floor a few times and i know that there's a dip going through the middle here where it just sinks a little bit by about four or five mil so what i do is i've, I've laid the adhesive down now the kst down and then i just take 
that board and look for daylight underneath the board. There's none there. You can actually see the impression because I've combed it through. You can see where if I press it in there, you can see the lines on both sides, but you can't see any line in the middle, which means there's a hollow spot. So it wouldn't be the end of the world because you can make that up with the tile adhesive. But as I've got the opportunity now, and it's be kind to Tyler's week, in case you didn't know, I'm just going to build it up slightly in that middle. And that way, we can be sure we got enough. I'll just check that with that board again. Lovely job. Now this adhesive's going off a bit faster than I wanted it to, due entirely to the fact that they've got the central heating on in this house. That's level. That's level. It's a little bit high there. Let's get the Let's get the stabiler on the case. It's too long. It is too long. That's when you have to saw a bit off the end of it. I wish I'd clean this up, but that's lovely actually. That my friend is spot on. Let's get the next one in. It's going to be late. We're going to be. Yeah, so do you want me to just do it? We're going to be two hours here. It's arguably easier to do this than it is to make it up with self leveler. Now, I had a bit of a late finish last night because I wanted to get this ball down and then leave it before I walked on it. So it's had overnight to set with the KST adhesive under it. And it's always one of those things, I'm trying to make up some levels because the floor's dropping away over there. So I'm building it up and putting it down and I didn't want any hollows under it. So it was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a mission, but I thought it was better for me to try and get some of that leveled out with the board so that the tiler has got less to make up because we're talking quite considerable drop in the corner of that room. But anyway, we're there. And what I did this morning is like, oh, you know, I hope it's okay. Walked around and I just absolutely just trod on it everywhere to make sure there was no flexing on it. And that meant that I could just give everything a real good push down. I've got the screws in, as you can see, the screws are these very short screws that just go through into the floorboard, but no further. But I know where all the pipes are in this room, so there's no danger of hitting the pipe anyway. So in some places, because the adhesive was built up, I had to use a longer screw. But anyway, it's all down, it's all really good. I'm really pleased with it, actually, that it's all so solid and firm. And if it wasn't, supposing I found the bit that was a little bit spongy, you know, in, in other words, there was a, a dip, it wasn't properly supported. It's not the end of the world because what you can do is just cut a little hole in it with a, a Stanley knife or something like that. Remove that little section, just a, I'm not talking about a large thing, just a small hole. Remove that section of elements board, pour in a bit of self leveler into that hole and then put that piece of elements board back down on it. And that self leveler will then float under the floor to take out that sponginess. But it's better to, that you don't have to do that. But all I'm saying is that is a way around it if you did finish up with a little bit, because the one thing you don't want is for this to be flexing, because once it's tiled over, obviously you don't want any movement in that substrate. So I've already checked that this waste actually lined up and did a dry fit because at this stage you don't want any problems. So I've got the waste clipped in under there and I'm just going to put the self-tapping screws in 
Now it's important that you don't over tighten these because obviously you're going into plastic, you don't want to strip a thread or anything like that. So I've got a little torque wrench here. If I set this now to one. One newton meter is, is what they want. It's what they ask for, so we'll give those a little tightening. This tape, self-adhesive, it's quite amazing really. Once you've stuck that down, had a little time to make contact and you roll it in with the roller there won't be any water going down there and don't forget the tiles are coming down on the front as well so they're going to sit dead flush with that edge so it is again i keep saying this i keep using this phrase but belt and braces belt and braces and belt I've almost finished this pro seal now to make this waterproof enclosure. All I've got to do is put this gasket over the shower valve there and it's all nicely sealed up, ready for the tiler. Now this won't leak. This is 100% waterproof as it is. You could spray water on this all day long and it wouldn't uh, go through anywhere. But obviously you don't want it like that. You want a few tiles on the wall or whatever you want. You could even put panelling on the wall. So I'll leave all this to the tiler and I'll come back and do the second fix when he's finished his bit. He reckons he's got about six days work here, so it's quite a big tiling job really by the time he's done the floor and the mosaics, but it's going to look great. I could have done this an inch and a quarter, as it's coming out of there in two inch. I thought, let's use it. No more blocked up basins, no more hair, yeah, because basin mice are always horrible. They're always slow. You get any trouble with the basin mice. So these, they actually come out in two inch. I've reduced it to an inch and a half. I'm twinning two into there. And I'm a little bit concerned about the old glug, glug, glug. What I'm going to do is to put an air admittance valve there, up above the flood level of the basins. And that shelf that's going there, it'll be behind there. So if ever it needs to change, <laughs> it's easy. You pull out the shelf and do it. So what we've got here is a combined filler and overflow, which looks a little bit complicated, but actually it's not too bad. So that's fed from the mixer up there, the diverter on the mixer, so we can go to the hand spray or we can go to the bath filler and that I've done in a single pipe all the way so there are no joins in that pipe anywhere and hopefully that front piece will now go on without fouling that but if it does foul it again this material is so easy to work with I can just take a little bit out the back just to leave a bit of room for those pipes so on to the waste pipe now So what's that big opening there? This? Yeah. It's where the water comes out, the buffers. When you pull the plug, yeah. except of course you don't pull the plug anymore. Why not? Well, oh, because you just go, Alexa, empty the bath. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people don't like that version of the future. I don't, I don't use it. I never use it. I don't need a virtual woman to tell what to do. No, uh, well, you haven't got one anyway, have you? What? You haven't got an Alexa, have you? No, I wouldn't. I don't, you know what, there's certain things in life. It's a bit gimmicky. I feel I can do that bit. I know, I mean, let's put it this way. If I'd lost the use of my hands and my legs and all the rest of it, and I had to rely on a computer, so I turn the lights off, all that kind of thing. So like Alexa, give me a sponge bath. Well, exactly, all that stuff, yeah. So, so what I'm thinking, all the time I've got the ability to do stuff for myself, mm. 
I don't need people to turn the lights on and off for me and all this stuff. And but it is handy. The only, the only thing I use it for is I'll say, hey Siri, give me a timer for 10 minutes. Hey Siri, who is Roger Bisbee? What would you like to know about Roger Bisbee? His career. I found an article about that on Wikipedia. Career as a region in East Asia. Would it work better if we asked about somebody who is better known? Now these are the ducats in and they're all MD sealed around to make sure they're waterproof and they've got some screws in the side. And another little feature in here is we're gonna have an LED light in each of these ducats. And in order to do that, we wanna really put the tiles in first and then feed the cable through the hole in the tiles all the way. So we've got some drawstrings here. If you have a look, like a little puppet show. So the drawstrings are there and we can draw the, the small cables. It's only low voltage, so there'll be small cables and they can be drawn through and connected up in this void here, which is where the cabinet's going to go. So everything is accessible for the future, which is lovely. Now, I must admit, I was up against it with this job. I was working late Friday night, I wanted to go home, and I forgot that I needed to tape up all these joints with the Pro Seal and the neoprene tape, because what we're trying to achieve here is not just a wet area that's completely waterproof, but the whole room. So we've tanked the whole thing out so that any water that's splashed over the edge of the bath or anywhere else is completely contained. So now I've done that, I've put the Pro Seal and the tape on, reapplied this underfloor heating, and you'll notice that this electric underfloor heating, the Devi mat, goes into the shower area. And a lot of people are worried about that. I've had this before where people go, oh, are you sure that's okay? That's electricity and water here. Well, actually, this stuff is encapsulated. The earth is on the outside, so if there's ever any problem with it, you would get an immediate trip. But the other thing is you must make sure that it's protected with NARCD. Anything in a bathroom, any electrics in a the bathroom these days have to be protected with NARCD. So we're not taking any chances. If there's a fault on this, it'll trip it and we know all about it. So we've put this down, we've fully tested it to make sure it's okay and it's functioning. And now we're ready to put a bit of self-leveler over the top of it and begin the tiling.